Joining us today, straight out of the Samoan dynasty, we have Sam Fatu, better known as the Tonga Kid. Thanks for joining us today. How's everything going out there? Oh, the West Coast is beautiful. What's up, New York City? <laughs> New now, Jersey. <laughs> now, for everybody listening, uh, you're going to be uh, appearing with ESS Promotions at the Legends of the Ring convention on June 10th and at Pro Wrestling World on June 11th. Uh, for more information, please head on over to ESSpromotions.com. But are you excited to head on over to the East Coast to meet some of your fans? You know what? It's been a long time since I've been there. But I want to knock this out and say this to all the wrestling fans throughout the East Coast and New York, New York and everywhere else in the West and the East Coast. I wanted to say thank you so much for supporting me over the over the time that I've been there. Madison Square Garden will always be my heart. You know, that's what made me who I am today. And also uh, a lot of the wrestlers that are out there today, too. I want to thank them, too. Yeah, I'm very excited to come back out there, you know, that's my home. That's like my second home there, you know, the East Coast. And, oh, yeah. you know, you guys are just booming out there, too. Your radio station, I got to give it up, man. I can hear you guys from out here, too. I got satellites now, you know? <laughs> that's right. Back then, we didn't have cell phones and stuff like that. But I'd be peeping you guys out, too. Yeah, I'm excited to see my family, my brothers, my uncles. You know, the Samoan Dynasty has been around for a very, very long time, you know? Mm-hmm. Almost like the Heart Foundations and the Barnerics and... You know, just a lot of lot of them, you know. Sure. But, yeah, I'm very excited to, to come out there. and looking forward to meeting all my fans. Not only did I have fans out there, I have a lot of good friends that I've met over the years since I uh, joined this business, you know. met a lot of good, all my Puerto Rican friends, my <laughs> black brothers, especially a lot of them are up in the big house, too, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to, to seeing all of them, too. And I want to shout out to all my Samoan brothers and sisters out there in the East Coast. My low today, my low say four. Well, that's Tonga and someone. Mix it all together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and also my boy, King Tonga. How you doing, brother? My man, Haku. I'm excited to see him, too. You come from a huge wrestling family, possibly the biggest wrestling family around, uh, with such names as yourself, Rikishi, Roman Reigns, the Head Shrinkers, the Usos, Yokozuna, The Rock. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. But uh, tell me, what was it like to be at a family reunion back in the day with you guys? I mean, you got you guys got the name of names of uh, wrestlers in that family. Family reunion, man. We don't play when it comes to that, man. We eat anything and everything. <laughs> 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 now, so this is going to be like a family reunion for me. You know, we have a lot of them. There's a couple of them that's not going to be there, you know, uh, with our Samoan reunion. I can say because I'm excited to see, like I said, my uncles and my cousins and my brother, you know. But we lost a lot of them, you know, oh, yeah. in this business, too. You know, we lost my brother, Humanga, there. And then we also lost Matt, Rosie, Matt on Hawaii, yeah. uh, Yoko Zuna, you know. So we just got to be careful. We got to all look after each other, protect each other in this business. These are my main three points that I want to put out there is we got to very be careful and take good care of ourselves. You know, Mm -hmm. every time I see a friend, a loved one or family, I always tell them, I want to see you again. You know what that means, right? I want to see you again, meaning I want to see you forever. Oh, yeah. So that's the catch there, you know, and uh, like I said before, you know, it's very important that we all try to, you know, what's a phone call away? And sure. When we have family reunion, our family is nothing. We come from a lovable family, respectable family, and not only that, our mom and our dad, we have the greatest parents in the world. You know, it all starts from them, you know? Sure. We have but- a pastor uh, from San Francisco. I had a grandfather. He was the pastor of a church in San Francisco, California. I also had a grandmother. So, you know, we come from a real strong Christian family, you know? Sure, yeah. Now, uh, growing up in such a big family that's in the wrestling business, was it always uh, inevitable that you would become a pro wrestler one day, or did you ever want to do anything else before wrestling? Actually, I wanted to be a football player. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I wanted to be a football player, but that didn't work out because, you know, football is you basically have to – it's a lot of work. You got college, you got uh, high school. You, you got to go through a lot of steps. In that case, I didn't make it there, but I was a trouble kid anyway. I grew up from the hood, from Sunnydale. I call it the swamp. So I grew up from a, a, a poor family, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was up to me. It was my choice that I was getting in so much trouble, hanging around the wrong kids, the wrong crew, 
And uh, I just got into a lot of trouble, but my mom just got tired of it and called Appa and Sika up and told them, hey, those are her brothers. So I was really scared of those guys. You know, I, actually, I take that back. A scare wasn't the word. I was feared from those two, you know? <laughs> yeah. And sometimes we need that. We need people like that in our life to put us in line, you know? Oh, yeah. yep. But I'm thankful that I'm thankful that those two put me in check, you know? <laughs> and this is where I'm at today. If it wasn't for Alpha and Chica, I wouldn't become a pro wrestler or, or where I'm at right now. I don't tell you why. I'd probably be locked up in the big house, you know, with a lot of my other Samoan Usos up in there, you know? Sure, yeah. Now, now yeah. Uh, speaking of that, though, you, you got your start in 83. Uh, the WWE was a, a different monster back then uh, compared to what it is to today. But could you take us back briefly of the, how you got that call to wrestle uh, for the WWE? Well, I was at a show, and I think it was uh, Springfield, Massachusetts, right? And I was there at the show with Alpha and Sika and a lot of other guys. So one of the guys didn't show up. I think it was Salvador Belomo. And we would always go there early to the shows. And my uncle Alpha and Sika and Big John Studd and Andre the Giant and, you know, just a lot of other names that were there, too, you know. Mm -hmm. They know who they are when I'm saying this because I turned 17, so we would go there early and they would train me in the ring. I would roll around in the ring. So I got somebody didn't show up. So Pat Patterson goes in the back and tells the Samoans up in Sika, the, do I know how to wrestle? Right. And then they uh -huh. said, yes. Now I didn't know all this, you know, they said, yes, he knows how to wrestle. Now knowing <laughs> well, I was only two or three months into the game. I was just pulling around in the ring. Sure. So basically they threw me into the ring and said, Hey, you're going to wrestle this He's Puerto Rican. He's from New York City. I think his name was Johnny Roz. Yeah. Yeah, I think his name is Johnny Roz. He has a school out there in Brooklyn, New York, or something like that. Yep, yep. So, um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, but, if you know, if I am, then correct me. But I remember that match, and I'll never forget my first match. You know, it's like getting married, you know. When you get married, you never forget your first wife, right? <laughs> well, I, I know some guys do, but I know I didn't. You know, I'm still with the sure. same lady for 31 years, you know. God bless you, but yeah, that that's the that was my my that's wow. how I started in this business is Springfield, Massachusetts, and wow. they threw me into the ring and they say, hey, just do what you've been doing when we come to the show early because back then we didn't fly everywhere, we drove a lot. Yeah, back now, in now, New York, you know. Sure, yeah. No, but now uh, what was I say too? Uh, one of your biggest uh, feuds was with uh, Roddy Piper because uh, you were billed as Jimmy Snuka's cousin. Uh, both of those legends who have passed away since, but uh, coming into the WWE uh, as a young kid, uh, what was it like to being able to work with these two guys right away? Well, listen, I can tell you this much: I was basic born. You know, when you're born to do something, or you're blessed, or you have the talent to do it. I had that talent and I was born to become a wrestler. You know, now I didn't know that all this time until it happened there in New York City. But being around those two legends, man, they were not only, they were a teacher to me, you know, and it was an honor for me to wrestle those two and to wrestle with them. You know what I mean? Sure. So yeah. it's like going to work with your colleagues. And that's basically what it is. Every day I was with them, every single day. And not only that, they taught me. And what the best part about it is if I didn't grow up the way I grew up where I respect my parents and my, you know, and, and honor my parents, I would have never be where I was at. I didn't get big headed. I listened to them. They, whatever they told me what to do, I did it, you know, but as the, my career took off, what better place or better people to wrestle than Rowdy Rowdy Piper it's been in the bins of a whole lot longer than me. It was an honor for me. Until this day, I'm still thankful for the people that's been in my career over the years. You know, wrestling back then was fun. Yeah. You know, it was fun. Now, I don't know if they just took the fun out of it or it's not even, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, I know what you mean. Back yep, yep. Then, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I, you know, I, I really don't. When people, I don't even watch wrestling no more. I have, I don't, I don't watch wrestling. I don't follow people with, Stop me. Hey, you're the phone that gave me like, yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> oh, you know, your cousin Roman Reigns won the belt. And I go, he did. And this was like three years ago. And I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, he did. And they think I'm talking about last night. Man, I, I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> it's not fun to me anymore. Sure, but I yeah. can say this. Vince McMahon, the WWF, back then was WWF. Now it's uh -huh. WWE, has been good to me and my family. That I can say. And me, my family, 
the Samoan dynasty, all the way to Peter Maivia, to Dwayne Johnson, the Rock Apasika, my brother Rakishi, me, myself, and I, I can say that because I had three, four different names. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. They were good to us, and we were good to them. Sure. So there's nothing that we can say back. All we say is to give our family and our kids an opportunity and let them do what they do. Because a lot of our kids nowadays that are going, I got grandkids that are four years old I'm training. They already know how to take a bump. <laughs> they know how to take a thrust kick. They already know how to do a Samoan drop before they were even three. <laughs> wow. You know, so yeah, yeah. of course it's in our it's, it's in our bloodline. It's like pit bulls. You know, oh. you ever throw a pit bull in the cage with a Jimmy Shepherd? <laughs> well, it's it's a rap, man. It's over. It's done. <laughs> you know. Sure. So for you know for me to come back out to the East Coast and I mean I can go on and on with so wow. much stuff, but I got You know, I got a documentary coming out. Oh, right. I'm probably going to have people hate me. People are going to like me. But, you know, I don't care. They don't pay my bills, so I don't really care about them. You <laughs> of know? course. Yeah. But I do care about my fans. That's who I do care about. And my family. You know, but most of all is my wife and my five kids that I have now. Nice. Now, yeah. I, just, I, so, I just got one more question for you, too, before we go. Uh, you know, besides wrestling, you also starred in one of my favorite wrestling movies back in the 80s, Body Slam. Uh, was that something that kind of fell into your lap, or how did you land in that role? I think I landed in that I landed in that role because I already had a fugitive with Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Uh-huh. You know, I already was, you know, main event all over with Piper, and I was wrestling Piper any anyway at that time. So I think what they wanted to do was what they're doing now. They made it like a Hollywood, right? Right now. Wow. So they basically turned the, 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 the angle out of a movie. Huh. You know? So yep. my uncle, Apple and Sika, I guess uh, the Cindy Lauper's manager, Dave Wolf, I guess got a hold of some of the guys and, uh, and uh, me and Piper was getting into it already. So that's how that ended up becoming the movie. You know, it was a wrestling an angle, then it turned out to become a movie. Huh. And, you know, I really had a lot of fun doing that. You know, movies so much easier, yeah. you know, than it is wrestling, you know. It, sure, it really yeah. is, you know. <laughs> so there's nothing I can say about doing that movie because I wish I would have stuck to it. But listen, if there's anybody out there, producer or whoever that is listening that does movies, well, I'm the man to contact, Tonga Kid. <laughs> you can go on my Facebook at TK Fatu. Because I'm ready to explode right now. I'm 50 years old now. I just can't begin. do a lot of things that I use. I'm not <laughs> jumping off no rope. You'd be lucky to get me to jump off the second rope. You know, you wouldn't have to yeah. pay me $1 million to jump off that top rope. <laughs> you know, and people don't see that anymore, sure. you know, yep. especially from me, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it, Madison Square Garden, let, let me throw this out there sure. before I leave. I want to say again to Rowdy Piper's family. Jimmy Snooker's family, everyone that's been in my life out there over the years of my career and me wrestling, it was an honor for me. And I know they lost their loved one, and I want to say our prayers are out to you and your family. It's nothing easy to heal from, you know. Like I said, we just lost a family, too. Mm -hmm. We just lost my cousin Matt, you know, and the list goes on. But we're not trying to kill the Samoan dynasty. We're trying to keep them alive. Mm. You know, and the West Coast, we're going to keep them alive, even in the East Coast. So I'm excited for me and my son just to come out there and to visit, you know, uh, out there in New York City. You know, and my son, Jacob, you know, he's a newcomer, the Samoan werewolf. And um, I, I think he's he's out. He's, he's amazing. You know, when you watch him and watch him wrestle, you can go on YouTube and watch him. He's almost just like me, but not as good as me. <laughs> well uh, sam fatu uh the tonga kid thank you so much for joining us we can't wait to see you uh on june 10th and 11th with the ess promotions everybody listening head on over to esspromotions.com get more information uh thanks so much and we wish you and your family nothing yes, but the best and, and i want to say one more thing to all the fans don't forget to come out there and get your pictures with the samoan dynasty you know and that's all of us you only get us one time it's a one-time deal right here it's a one-time shot <laughs> so come get it now because tickets are running out, tickets are sold out, and you might be standing there for five hours if you don't get them now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, thank you so much, and we wish you nothing but the best. All right. God bless you. God bless you, New York City, New Jersey. <laughs>